The images are evidence of an extraterrestrial craft in Earth's orbit that is known as the Black Knight Satellite. It has happened. The U.S. has detected a mysterious dark signal coming from an old satellite we all believe to be dead. You may expect scientists to be ecstatic about this discovery, but that is not the case, and the reason is obvious. The reason the satellite started transmitting signals again after a long period of inactivity is still unknown. The fact that it has suddenly returned raises red flags. There's clearly something strange about its sudden resurgence. Many assume this proves the mission was used for clandestine military initiatives because of its history of cooperation with the US military. This suggests that the zombie satellite might be concealing some information after years of radio silence. Is it possible that the aliens have rewired our satellite to function as a surveillance satellite? What was the signal it sent for? Join us as we explore how this old broken satellite just turned itself back on and sent us a signal that completely changes everything. The traces of human interference in space are numerous. The proliferation of space debris has become a serious problem. The majority of it is made up of decommissioned satellites that are in orbits too high to be brought back to Earth only by the force of gravity. Do not assume that everything is over simply because a satellite has gone down. Six of them have shown that satellites can occasionally reawaken unexpectedly and on their own. These obsolete spacecraft orbiting our planet are known as zombie satellites. Any satellite that starts communicating again after a long period of inactivity can be called a zombie satellite. Typically, these devices become so disoriented or unable to recharge that they become uncontrollable and the ground is unable to reach them. Then, either they start working again of their own will or the intelligent people on Earth figure out how to get in touch with them in novel ways. Among the world's longest gaps in communication, there is AMSAT OSCAR 7. This amateur radio satellite went into orbit in November 1974 and remained in orbit for a full seven years. The mission of the satellite was terminated in 1981 due to a battery failure. However, on June 21, 2002, after a gap of 21 years, the satellite resumed communication. A handful of individuals have made it a pastime to locate these misplaced and abandoned satellites. One of these is Scott Tilley, a Canadian amateur radio operator who has assisted NASA in contacting several of these objects, including the 2005 lost NASA probe. Now, NASA has confirmed a remarkable finding. A radio amateur searching for a secret government satellite found signals from a spacecraft that was believed to have gone missing 12 years ago. This gives us renewed optimism that NASA may be able to revive a mission that altered our perception of the invisible ocean surrounding the planet. IMAGE was a machine designed to see the invisible, as one of the mission's lead scientists once put it. It was a squat and boxy thing, like many satellites, with a long technical name, IMAGER for Magnetopause to Aurora Global Exploration, that obscured its plain and noble purpose, to map the roiling sphere of electric gas around the Earth that protects us from the sun and which we had never seen in full before. Humans had only known for a few decades before IMAGER's launch in 2000 that Earth was encircled by a magnetosphere. Lead scientist James Birch referred to it as an invisible ocean in an essay he wrote prior to the launch where the vast currents and pulses are recorded by intangible phenomena, such as the absence of snow, sand, trees, or even clouds. While allowing light to reach Earth, the sphere blocks the sun's damaging winds. Its plasma ebbs and flows in the solar wind like water in a river. However, just like the ocean, it is susceptible to solar storms, which are so powerful that they can damage Earth's power infrastructure and even knock out satellites. 
image was developed with the goal of transmitting the first ever photographs of the Earth's magnetosphere back to Earth for the purpose of storm prediction. Over the course of five years, it shocked us. In the summer of 2000, the satellite enabled scientists to virtually live stream weather from space by sending back images of a massive solar storm. The Earth's sphere turned out to be a far different location than first anticipated. In order to protect itself from space storms, Earth squirts jets of its own atmosphere, much like a squid spouting ink, according to image. It documented the origin of enigmatic radiation, found holes in the Earth's magnetic field, and captured images of charged particles whirling around the planet at a speed of 100,000 volts. Additionally, Image ceased delivering photographs in the final month of 2005, coinciding with the day the President of the United States spoke from the Oval Office, pledging to end the still young Iraq war. All of a sudden, the satellite vanished from view. Experts in the field sought to ascertain the cause. Their best hypothesis was that the radio's breaker had tripped. However, they were unable to instruct it to power itself back on in the absence of a radio. A month after Image became silent, NASA sent a press release announcing the mission's success and ending the satellite's run. But NASA had it wrong. Image was not dead, but it would circle Earth for more than a decade before a man with no professional astronomy training, one who did not always accept the official explanation of events, heard its call. The 21st century moved into its second decade and space exploration changed. New machines were sent into orbit, and some of them, like Image, were lost too. Codenamed Zuma, a clandestine satellite was launched in January 2018 by an undisclosed government agency through a private corporation. Unlike Image, this machine was designed to remain undetectable by the majority of the world's population. It was a complete and utter failure. No one has said publicly what exactly went wrong during the January 7th launch, whether Zuma crashed back into an ocean or simply died in space. Its fate and purpose have become a mystery of the new space age, and all of this bothered Scott Tilly very much. Space is not owned by anybody. Anybody should be able to look up and know those little dots moving across the night sky are not bombs, according to Tilly. He is so troubled by secret military satellites and classified orbits that he joined forces with a global community of amateurs to locate all of the satellites whose owners would rather they remained hidden. Perhaps Zuma lay broken and lifeless at the bottom of the ocean, Tilly thought. However, this may not be the case. He then started scanning. Instead of using a telescope, he listened for radio signals in the vast, unseen ocean. After a week of searching, Tilly nearly disregarded the signal he had intercepted. Its orbit was significantly higher than Zuma's expected one, whatever it was. Space is home to hundreds of operational satellites, the vast majority of which piqued his disinterest. But as he persisted in his search for Zuma, he rediscovered the signal, this time stronger, and, intrigued, compared it to a conventional library. The signal matched for image. But Image was supposed to be dead, right? Earthlings had largely forgotten about the ancient satellite, so Tilly had to resort to Google to learn more about it. He eventually stumbled onto a NASA study detailing the mission's failure from a decade ago. After that, he rushed to contact NASA himself. Even though it was announced in an outdated press release, Image's story on Earth had just begun. A week later, in the beginning of 2006, NASA clandestinely assembled a group of specialists to examine the full data set from the satellite in an effort to determine the cause of the malfunction. Months passed while they toiled. Upon seeing the final report, the board persisted in believing that Image had, similar to a malfunctioning iPhone, tripped a power breaker and effectively bricked itself. Their proposal, however, suggested a possible solution for the satellite's repair, or rather, how it might fix itself. Image attempted to reset its computer and turn the breaker back on if its battery ever drained sufficiently. It was solar powered. After careful consideration, the board determined that a profound eclipse, a situation in which Image would be in Earth's shadow due to its orbit, 
was most likely to occur in late 2007. However, the plan failed to materialize. After the eclipse, NASA attempted to get in touch with IMAGE, but the spacecraft remained unresponsive, prompting the agency to permanently end the project. And then, a decade later, Tilly found the machine chirping away. After his discovery, another independent astronomer, C's Bassa, looked for IMAGE's signal in years of old data. He postulated that a subsequent eclipse, likely between 2014 and 2016, successfully reset the satellite, even if the 2007 eclipse had failed to do so. According to Bassa, the battery efficiency gradually declined over the lifetime of IMAGE to the point that, even during less intense eclipses, the battery was depleted enough to trigger the reset and restart the transmitter on board. Actually, the CIA first doubted that the signal that Tilly discovered originated from IMAGE. Antennas were pointed at the obvious by scientists at the Goddard Space Flight Center after Tilly alerted NASA. At first glance, it appeared to be identical to their long-lost satellite in terms of orbit, frequency, oscillation, and spin rate. However, NASA proceeded with caution while providing public updates, stating that it needed more time to study the encoded data of the signal before reaching a definitive conclusion. Amateur and professional astronomers alike were becoming increasingly pumped up. Confirmation did arrive, but it was shrouded in space scientific jargon, and that didn't diminish its significance. On the afternoon of January 30th, the Johns Hopkins Applied Physics Lab in Laurel, Maryland, successfully collected telemetry data from the satellite, NASA wrote. The signal showed that the spacecraft ID was 166, the ID for image. The NASA team has been able to read some basic housekeeping data from the spacecraft, suggesting that at least the main control system is operational. That bodes well for the possibility that IMAGE will eventually transmit additional images of the ocean where it has been drifting for almost 12 years. Moreover, another US satellite that was supposed to be garbage in orbit over half a century ago resurfaced and sent messages back to Earth. According to NASA, the apparent zombie satellite was one of a series of nine satellites, LES-1 through LES-9, designed and built by Lincoln Laboratory between 1965 and 1976. The purpose of the unmanned spacecrafts was to test techniques for military satellite communication. Despite not reaching their planned orbit due to many launch mishaps, LES-1 to LES-4 nonetheless achieved outstanding results. Although LES 5, 6, 8, and 9 all reached their destinations and fulfilled their missions as planned, SLES 7 was shelved because of financial constraints and the cancellation of the Westford project. In 2013, an amateur radio astronomer from North Cornwall, UK, picked up a signal that was later determined to come from LES 1. According to Phil Williams, an amateur radio astronomer, the signal from LES-1 pulsed on and off every four seconds. The strange signal was linked, according to scientists, to the satellite tumbling end over end, which obscured the solar panels as it slid through orbit. A more powerful signal was transmitted by the satellite as its solar panels absorbed more and more sunlight. As the voltage from the solar panels changes, this makes the signal sound very ethereal. LES-1's signal resumption mechanism is a mystery. Since the onboard batteries had probably dissolved after 46 years in orbit, Williams points out that there must be another explanation for why the 237 MHz transmission continued. The zombie satellite poses no threat as it will likely be years before it eventually tumbles to the Earth's surface. At the same time, the extent to which we rely on satellites in Earth's orbit is not always obvious to us. If we suddenly lose all communication with Earth, our space correspondent can only begin to fathom the consequences. There is a growing awareness among governments worldwide of the seriousness of the risks to our space infrastructure and the need to strengthen the systems upon which we depend. To focus their thoughts and with a nod to that pioneer of threats from space, Orson Welles 
here is what might happen if we suddenly encountered a day without satellites according to a simulation. Nothing unexpected happened. There was no water shortage, no power outage, and no planes plummeted from the sky. At least, not at first. While several features did immediately cease functioning, the majority of individuals found these issues to be more of a nuisance than anything else. Many families had to resort to chatting over cereal because they no longer had access to the upbeat, scripted smiles of breakfast TV hosts due to the loss of satellite television. No news reports from other countries or updates on recent international sporting events were broadcast on the radio. However, on the outside, the globe was in jeopardy due to the demise of global satellite communications. A pilot squadron in the US lost touch with their armed drones over the Middle East while flying over a bunker. Aircraft, ships and soldiers were left defenseless and disconnected from their commanders due to insecure satellite communications equipment. It was difficult for world leaders to communicate and diffuse growing tensions without satellites. Over the Atlantic, thousands of passengers were engrossed in movies, completely unaware of the chaos on board as pilots grappled with communicating with air traffic control. Seafarers in the China Sea, Arctic container ships, and relief workers in the Sahara were cut off from the rest of the globe when satellite phones weren't available. Communicating with co-workers in different nations became more of a challenge when offices opened up in cities like Tokyo, Shanghai, Moscow, London, and New York. Many international phone calls were unsuccessful, however, email and the internet appeared to be functioning properly. The world's interconnected rapid communications networks were starting to fall apart. The planet appeared to be growing in size rather than contracting. The disconnection of the global positioning system emerged as a fresh danger to international peace and security as heads of state assembled their crisis teams. From our point of view, most of us were able to navigate from point A to point B without being completely disoriented thanks to GPS. It revolutionized the delivery industry, facilitated faster response times from emergency services, enabled planes to land on remote runways, and made it possible to track and trace vehicles, trains, ships, and planes. It turned out, though, that GPS was far more integrated into our daily lives than most of us understood. Space-based global positioning system satellites are essentially nothing more than extremely precise atomic clocks that relay Earth's time to Earth. Three or more satellites send out time signals, which are picked up by ground-based receivers like the ones in your car or smartphone. The receiver can determine the satellite's distance by comparing the space-based time signal with the local time. These precise time signals from space, however, have many other applications. It became clear that our society had grown more dependent on these uses. Time is the glue that holds our infrastructure together, from the protocols that make up the internet to the timestamps on intricate financial transactions. Data packets traveling between computers begin to malfunction when they become out of sync. Every computer-controlled network is vulnerable in the absence of precise time, which is to say, practically everything. In the event that the GPS signals were interrupted, secondary systems that relied on precise ground clocks were activated. However, the passing of time became apparent within a few hours. Just a few milliseconds in the US compared to Europe, a minuscule disparity between Australia and India. The internet ground to a standstill as web searches slowed and the cloud failed. Transmission networks had trouble keeping up with demand, Thus, the first power outages occurred later in the evening. As a backup plan, engineers at computerized water treatment operations resorted to manual processes. All forms of public transportation came to a halt when key city traffic lights and train signals went red. In the late afternoon, mobile phone services, which had been inconsistent all day, completely went down. Officials in charge of aviation had already decided to ground commercial flights, but they were hesitant to do so. Most flights had already been cancelled due to the breakdown of satellite communications and GPS, but the weather, a more common failure, was the last straw. What would later be called 
the day without satellites had already had a profound effect. Severe disruptions had occurred in the areas of communications, transportation, power and computer systems. Worldwide trade had come to a standstill and governments were finding it difficult to respond. The imminent collapse of food supply chains was the subject of political warnings. Governments implemented emergency measures due to concerns about a potential collapse of public order. If the disturbance persisted, additional difficulties would arise daily. No longer would satellite images reveal the state of crops, illicit logging in the Amazon, or the extent of ice cover in the Arctic. There would be a lack of long-term climate records and photos from satellites that rescue workers rely on during disasters would also be omitted. The fact that we could take everything for granted is a credit to the space industry, but nobody paid attention until the satellites went missing. So, could all this happen? Not unless all of a sudden everything went wrong, which is quite unlikely. Without a doubt, space technology is now integral to the infrastructure upon which we all depend. Without satellites, the world would be a very different place. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space.